I am Saideline Amparado and I will be presenting a case report on swindling or estafa under Article 315 of the Revised Penal Code. This is the case of People of the Philippines, Plaintiff Apelli versus Julie Grace K. Villanueva, Accused Appellant, GR Number 1636-62. February 25, 2015. Article 215, Paragraph 2D of the Revised Penal Code provides 215. Swindling or estafa any person who shall defraud another by any of the means mentioned herein below, by means of any of the following false pretenses or fraudulent acts executed prior to or simultaneously with the commission of the fraud. By post dating a check or issuing a check in payment of an obligation when the offender had no funds in the bank or his funds deposited therein were not sufficient to cover the amount of the check. The failure of the drawer of the check to deposit the amount necessary to cover his check within three days from receipt of notice from the bank and or the payee or holder that said check has been dishonored for lack of or insufficiency of funds shall be prima facie evidence of deceit constituting false pretense or fraudulent act. Elements of estafa in general First, that the accused defrauded another by abuse of confidence or by means of deceit. And second, the damage or prejudice capable of pecuniary estimation is caused to the offended party or third person. The elements of estafa under 300, Article 315, Paragraph 2D are first, that the offender postdated a check or issued a check in payment of an obligation. Second, that such postdating or issuing a check was done when the offender had no funds in the bank or his funds deposited therein were not sufficient to cover the amount of the check. And third, that damage or prejudice capable of pecuniary estimation is caused by the offended party or third person. In the case of People v. Villanueva, the facts of the case are as follows. The accused was charged with estafa as defined and penalized under Article 315, Paragraph 2D of the Revised Penal Code. The complainant, Madarang, who is in the business of selling jewelry, was able to sell to Villanueva five sets of jewelry worth 1 million and 10,000 pesos. She then made out nine checks drawn against Philippine National Bank, eight of which were postdated. Madarang received the checks because of Villanueva's assurance that they would all be honored upon presentment. However, the drawway bank paid only two PNB checks. The remaining seven checks was dishonored, either by reason of account closed or drawn against insufficient funds. After Villanueva did not settle her obligations, despite the demand letters, Madarang brought the criminal complaint for estafa. Villanueva denied the accusation, pleaded not guilty, and insisted that she did not receive any notice from Madarang regarding the dishonor of the checks and insists on the absence of fraud when she drew the post-dated checks, averring that first, the checks were issued as replacement, second, the checks could only be deposited or encashed after Madarang was notified of the sufficiency of funds, and c. the receipt presented by the prosecution failed to embody the real intention of the parties. Here, the Regional Trial Court rendered its judgment finding Villanueva guilty of estafa and was affirmed by the Court of Appeals. The issue in this case is whether or not Villanueva committed estafa punishable under Article 315, Paragraph 2D of the Revised Penal Code in issuing the seven post-dated checks. The ruling of the court in this case is yes, the court affirmed the conviction under Article 315, Paragraph 2D of the Revised Penal Code. The estafa charge in the information may be committed when first, the offender has post-dated or issued a check in payment of an obligation contracted at the time of the post-dating or issuance. 
Second, at the time of post-dating or issuance of said check, the offender has no funds in the bank or the funds deposited are not sufficient to cover the amount of the check. And third, the payee has been defrauded. The deceit should be the efficient cause of the defraudation and should either be prior to or simultaneous with the act of fraud. In the present case, all the elements of estafa were present. The first element was admitted by Villanueva who confirmed that she had issued the checks to Madarang in exchange for the jewelry she had purchased. The second element was likewise established because the checks were dishonored upon presentment due to insufficiency of funds or because the account was already closed. The third element was also proved by showing that Madarang suffered prejudice by her failure to collect from Villanueva the balance of 995,000 pesos, hence Villanueva is guilty of estafa.